Sampler is Ableton Live's premier instrument for working with sampled audio. It combines flexible multi-sampling with a rich set of internal sound shaping possibilities and an extensive modulation system. Because Sampler is integrated into Live itself, it can work with massive sample collections while using a minimum amount of computer resources. Best of all, Sampler was designed with the same attention to workflow that can be found throughout the Ableton product family. This means the Sampler is both powerful and easy to use. In this movie, you'll take a tour of some of Sampler's inspiring presets, get a basic overview of its interface, and get an introduction to using Sampler for sound design. First, let's listen to some sounds from Sampler. Now, let's do a bit of sound design in Sampler and learn its interface along the way. Sampler's interface is navigated via a series of tabs that is always visible in the title bar. We have a basic preset here that contains a single piano sample. We're going to turn this piano sample into a synth bass sound. The sample's waveform is visible in the Sample tab, while the Zone tab toggles the display of Sampler's Zone Editor, which appears in its own dedicated view directly above the track view. The Zone Editor shows all of the samples that are in the current sampler preset. The Sample tab also shows the playback parameters for the currently selected sample. These controls adjust the basic tuning, volume, and pan of the sample, as well as start and loop markers. To start, I'll enable looping and create a short loop. Now I'll adjust the crossfade to smooth the loop boundaries. For this sound, it's okay if we can still hear a bit of roughness. I'll now click the Pitch OSC tab, which is divided into two sections. The upper half contains a modulation oscillator, while the bottom half contains the pitch envelope. The modulation oscillator applies frequency or amplitude modulation to the samples, depending on the setting of the toggle switch below the oscillator's activator. We're going to use amplitude modulation to add a bit of bite to our sound. First, I'll click the OSC button to enable the oscillator. Then I'll click AM to switch it from frequency modulation to amplitude modulation. Now I'll turn up the oscillator's volume. At very high values, the sound will become distorted and inharmonic. I'll also adjust the velocity to volume slider to about 20% so that our oscillator has some velocity sensitivity. We're now going to use the pitch envelope to create a fast pitch drop when the sample is triggered. This will create a punchy attack. First, I'll enable the pitch envelope and set the amount to plus 12 steps. We now have a pitch drop when we press a key but the envelope settings aren't quite right for our purposes. We want something faster and more dramatic. For this, I'll adjust the envelope settings. These pitch envelope settings also transpose the preset down an octave. Let's transpose down one more octave. Let's also enable Glide, which makes our preset monophonic and causes a pitch slide between notes if the new note is played while the old note is held.
A good synth bass needs a good low-pass filter. I'll click the Filter Global tab to view our filter and volume envelope parameters. I'll now turn the filter on and change the type to LP24, low-pass, 24 dB per octave. I'll now make the filter's effect more prominent by setting the filter's frequency to about 185 Hz and the resonance to about 6. So far, the filter has mostly just made the sound quieter. To get a more dramatic effect, I'll enable the filter envelope and turn the amount all the way up to 72. I'll tweak the decay and sustain values to find a sound I like. This is much closer to the sound we're looking for, but it's still too quiet. Let's adjust the volume envelope's velocity to volume slider to add a bit of velocity control over volume. I'll set this to 70%. Now, let's use a low-frequency oscillator to apply some automatic modulation to our sound. I'll click the Modulation tab to show the auxiliary envelope and the three independent LFOs. LFO 2 and 3 allow routings to many of Sampler's parameters. I'll enable LFO 2 now. In order to hear the modulation, I need to choose a destination for the LFO. In the A chooser, I'm selecting Filter Envelope Amount and setting the corresponding amount slider to 100. When I hold a key, we now hear a pulse at the frequency of the LFO, 1 Hz. Let's change the frequency so that it's tempo synced by clicking the note switch in the rate section. Now I'll adjust the speed to a nice syncopated 3 16th notes. To really make our synth bass an expressive performance instrument, we'll now add some MIDI control. I'll click the MIDI tab to show the modulation matrix. Any of these MIDI controllers can be assigned to two independent destinations. Let's use our modulation wheel to control filter parameters. First, I'll choose Filter Frequency in the Destination A chooser for the mod wheel and set its amount to about 20. Now I'll select Filter Q, Resonance, in the mod wheel's destination B chooser and set amount B to 100. You'll now hear a more pronounced filter effect as I turn up the modulation wheel while holding notes. In this movie, you've gotten an introduction to some of Sampler's presets, its interface, and a quick tutorial in basic sound design. Here are some ideas for further exploration. Go back through the movie and try out different settings for all of the parameters. You might be surprised how different the patch can sound when just one parameter changes. Try replacing the original sample with other samples from your library. You'll have to adjust the loop parameters in the sample tab, but all of your other parameter settings will be maintained. The sound design example here used only a single sample and none of Live's effects. Your sound design possibilities become much more varied as soon as you start adding additional samples to a sampler preset and applying Live's effects devices.